Hello! This training has been designed to be a tutorial for you to follow along with and learn about Scholastic's Book Wizard tool. I will walk you through the steps of creating a free Scholastic account, which is actually different than the Scholastic Reading Club's account that many teachers already have. We will search for books based on a reading level, as well as find the specific reading level of a book title, and we will learn how to set up and manage a book list. This tutorial will cover using the desktop version as well as the mobile app version of Book Wizard. Now I designed this tutorial to be for educators, but it could very easily be adapted for parent or student use. All you need is an existing email account to begin. It can be a personal account or one from your district. As long as it is, as long as it is your email account, you can use it. So to start, go ahead and open up your own internet browser and go to www dot scholastic dot com slash book wizard and go if you are not comfortable typing that in yourself you can go to any search engine such as Google and type in scholastic book wizard once you have accessed the site up in the top right corner choose register unless you already have a scholastic account Please keep in mind that this is different than a Scholastic Reading Club's account. So if you already have a Scholastic Reading Club's account, this will have to be different. You click on Register. And if you are a parent or family, you can register now with the orange button. But teachers and educators, we want to register with the blue button. Now we have a couple options here once we get to the Scholastic Educator Registration. You can fill all of these things out and choose what kind of school location you have. But you also have the option to sign in with a Facebook page, uh, Google+, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Um, it's totally up to you what you want to, how you want to sign that up. Um, once you have made your preference, then you will continue to select your school and complete your profile. Once you have an account and you are all signed in, you will see your name up here at the top. Mine says Vanessa. <laughs> the next thing that I found to be the most helpful is to set up a book list. Yes, you could get started searching books right away, but I found it to be most effective if you go ahead and start your book list. That way, as you add books from your current library in your classroom, you can add them right to an existing book list that you have already made. So up here at the top, close to the sign out and account, you will see my book list, and you want to hit go. And down here, you'll see that I already have a level, and I called it level A, and that's a book list. But you can create any book list and you could create it anything that you want. Please do keep in mind that whatever you create it as, it can be a public list if you choose to make it public. So make sure it has an appropriate title and it doesn't have any student names in it. Um, one of, so once you get started, you can create your new list here with the little plus, create new list. Title it anything you want. Perhaps you want to make a list of all of the level B books. And down here in the comments, you're welcome to list any comments. Um, maybe you want to talk about a classroom that you have that in. Or if you are a media teacher, you could talk about which shelf that it's on. You do not have to have a comment. It is optional. Um, again, cr please keep in mind that these comments are made public if you choose to make your list public. So it's just something you want to keep in mind. And then you create your book list with that blue button there you wait and suddenly you have level B which is what I called mine and it shows me how many books I have when I modified it in this status now right now I do have it set to private um, you can make that public by easily choosing this button right here make public and you can include book notes or not include book notes and continue one of the benefits of making it public is that you could share this with other colleagues so that way you can see what you have between each other and as you collaborate, you can avoid having too many duplicates if you choose to collaborate and make that public with each other. Once you have your book list set up and you are ready to go, you, we are going to start searching for books. Um, please keep in mind that your book list can be anything you want. You can do them by levels. You could do them just one whole list of everything that you have in your personal library. That way you don't have to manage multiple lists, but it's completely up to you.
So for now, I'm going to choose guided reading because that's what my school uses. You do have the option of doing a grade level equivalent. You could do the DRA level or a Lexile measure. But for now, I'm going to choose guided reading because, like I said, that's what applies to me. So I'm going to search for Elephant and Piggy, which is one of my favorite series by Mo Willems. And I choose Find Books. And these are searching for just the book title that I put in. And once I look down here, I can see all of the Elephant and Piggy books that are in the Book Wizard catalog. And I can choose to add it to my book list if it's one that I already have currently in my classroom library. I could shop it on the Scholastic Reading Club page. I could add it from the teacher store. But I also see right here, this is what I was looking for. That guided reading level is level I. So I know that a guided reading level is what I was looking for. I was looking to see what kind of books they had and what levels they were. And if I have this book, which I do, and I love it, I'm going ahead and go add it to my book list. Now I don't currently have a level I. I could create a new book list and name it All Books, Save My List, and just put it inside of all books. You could choose multiple lists if you choose to, but I'm just for now going to put it into all books. Save it, and it tells me that this book has been saved to your book list. So that was pretty easy, and that's searching for any title. So if you know the title of your book, you can look up its level, but if you don't know the title of the book, you could do a search just by reading level. For example, if I wanted to search by grade level, I could search for a specific grade level and find. But again, we use guided reading at my school, and we look for levels. So if I know that my student is going to be a level J, I could look from any level from J to M, because that might be from, in from independent to instructional, and I can find books between the guided level, guided reading levels that I'm looking for. And inside here, there are 9,000 items that, ha that Scholastic has in Book Wizard that would be just right for me and what I'm looking for. And it's telling me right here the level. I can add it to my book list if it's one that I have in my catalog in my classroom or my, in my library classroom. Or I could go through here and add it to my cart, which is an option for educators only. Um, not all of them are available, but right here, Clifford at the Circus, it is available in paperback. So it's really nice that you have the option of, of purchasing them if you don't already have them and you want to add them to your library. If you have found that a student really likes a book that you have found, for example, let's look at Clifford's First Snow Day, and it's guided reading level J, and it's one that you know your student would really enjoy reading something similar. Using book alike as an option down here, you can find similar books and it will pop up with things that are within a certain reading level, but it will also pop up with other books that are close to that title or close to that interest. Once you have added enough books to your book list and you are ready to share them, you go back up to the top, find my book list, hit go, scroll down and if you're ready to share with a colleague you choose the list that you are looking for for example I will choose my all books I have already made it public and remember this button will help you if you choose to make it private or make it public and you may share it by email you can type in your name your email address and the recipient's email address you could download the list where you could print it and then share it that way. I hope after this tutorial you are feeling pretty confident in your ability to search for books, search by reading level, create a book list, and export your book list or share it uh, from the desktop version. But now I would like to go ahead and take you over to the mobile version because I have found this to be a very handy tool to have at my fingertips while I've been in my classroom because I can download this to my mobile device uh, such as my iPad. It can be on your phone. Um, 
I believe it's for Android, also for iPad. I will show you my from my iPad. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So if you want to continue with the mobile version, go ahead and get your mobile device and we'll get set up there. All right, so looking at my iPad, the very first thing I want to do is go to the App Store. In the App Store, I want to search for Book Wizard, and you'll see it pop up even before you finish. And you can type in Scholastic Book Wizard. Now you can see that by that cloud right here, I have already purchased this. I've already downloaded it. I took it off just to be able to show you this, but when you choose it, it is free. So you can choose Git, you might need to put in your credentials, and as soon as you're done with that, you can go ahead and download the item. Once it is fully downloaded, you can choose the option to open it up. And once it's open, you are ready to go. All you need to do is sign in. Once you have your credentials all typed in, you can go ahead and hit login. One of the best options I like about this app is that you can remember my info. I know it's very hard for me sometimes to remember all of my usernames and passwords, so the more often I can have an app remember my info, the better. You do have the option of registering up here if you do not already have a free Scholastic.com account. And remember, that is different than your Reading Club's account. So if you aren't registered, you can go to Scholastic.com and sign up today. I have found from my own personal preference that I, I like to sign up for accounts from the desktop version rather than mobile version when possible. But if, if you've already created your account with me in the prior part of this tutorial, then you are ready to go. You just need to hit login and you're ready. When this pops up, Book Wizard is asking you to have access to the camera and you want to say OK. The reason you want to choose OK is because it needs to access the camera so you can have the option to scan a barcode, which is an option that I have felt is a very powerful, fast, easy tool for you to use. Once you have your book and you have given the camera access, you just need to turn the book over. I chose a Harry Potter book. Turn the book over and on the back you see the barcode. Let the camera read that barcode loads and voila there it pops up Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince it showed me that the grade level equivalent Lexile measure guided reading level and the DRA you can scroll and look uh, to find out a little more about this book but you can also add it to your book list I chose all books and remember we had previously set up your book list but if you have not previously set up a book list you can create a new book list or a classroom library list. So I'm choosing to add it to all books. I could view my book list or close it. Here's all those books that I chose to add to all books. Tells me the levels that they are. I can view my lists again down here at the bottom. And again, once more, you can search. I really like this option for the mobile version. Uh, to search because it's it's frequently that you will be in your classroom you might not have your computer logged in but you have your phone next to you and you could type in duck on a bike do a search for it find duck on a bike and say yeah that's what I'm looking for you can quickly check out the levels Find out more about the book if you didn't already know more about it, and you can go ahead and add that book to your list. During the desktop version part of this tutorial, we went over looking for a specific title. What I didn't tell you is that you also have the option of looking up by author. So if I did want to know more from J.K. Rowling, I could type in Rowling, and it pops up, and I can see a variety of books by the author Rowling. So if you know your specific author, you could look those up. You could also look something up by a keyword. For example, maybe you wanted to look up something about a butterfly. Type in butterfly, and right there pops up a variety of books about butterflies, including some independent readers that I could choose for my students. I could find out more about the book, find out what that grade level equivalent is, add it to my book list, and I'm ready to go. The only option that I am not seeing 
on this mobile version that I see on the desktop version is the opportunity to purchase a book that you find. For example, if I do a search for that butterfly book and I decide that I really like this book, I don't have the option to purchase it anywhere. I do have the option to add it to a book list by choosing add to book list but also the plus up here but here is the, a, the option to share it I don't have the option to purchase it but I have the option to share it and when you press that box with the arrow which is a universal iPad sign for exporting it or sending it somewhere touch that and you have the option to share that book you can share it via print email share to Facebook Twitter or Pinterest you do have some great options at your fingertips to share just this book so you can share that with your colleagues collaborate a little and share that with families as well well that just about wraps everything up I want to thank you for taking the time to go through the tutorial with me I hope you found some great application for your classroom uh, my favorite part of using Book Wizard is on my mobile app. Actually, it's on my phone. What I showed you was the application through the iPad, um, but I, I love to scan the books and be able to find what those those reading levels are so fast um, as I'm leveling new books that come in through my Scholastic Reading Club's orders. Uh, the very last thing that I, I'm asking you to do, please, is to take a moment and fill out the little survey here and you have a printed copy sitting in front of you hopefully but if you don't please just take a moment to think about how this professional development increased or helped you uh, lead your performance as an educator I'm looking for what kind of skills did this help you with uh, did it help you yes or no why why not uh, what was your knowledge of this tool before you used the tutorial and what was your knowledge of the tool after the tutorial and this will help me better plan for professional development in the future so I really appreciate your time thank you